The second level, so that was Earth, almost you can say air and water coming together, water being the source of life, really, right? That, you know, we know that life came from the oceans, right? Um, anyway, that coming, the spirit coming down and taking place on Earth. And then we look at the fire element. And fire, we think of light, we think of illumination, and we think of uh, uh, perhaps spiritual illumination here. And this is more about, if this was the uh, casting, then this is more something, let's say, re regarding the script, the setting. Where am I born? What child order do I have? You know, what, what, if I have siblings, what, what, what birth order is there? Uh, what is the dynamic between the parents and the children going to be like? So we say this is the fire aspect, and this has Ling Shen, or this is uh, um, more about experiencing the emotional quality of what my life is going to be like. So this is what I am physically, this is more about what I'm going to learn socially. Right? And obviously much fewer spontaneous abortions in the, in the second trimester. And the third trimester is called the wood trimester. And the third aspect of soul, Ling Hun, is involved here. And this is called the uh, ethereal soul, or the soul that is involved in reincarnation. Okay, so this is the soul that has the memory of past lives, the collective consciousness of your past lives. Okay? And it's said that the each of these souls enter in each trimester, right? And there really is sort of like if, if the first trimester doesn't work out, that's really not much of a tragedy, okay? Because it's only the lowest form of the soul has, uh, has been left. Now, I don't mean to demean that, but it's, um, you know, from the Taoist perspective, that's, uh, that's not that serious. Sort of that's a trial period. But when we get into these other ones, now it's, 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 uh, it's a loss here, or it's a, uh, a more serious uh, affair here. Okay, and so this last, so let me just go back to here. The first trimester is about morning sickness for the mother, right? There's a lot of uh, um, uh, digestive issues that come on. The second trimester is generally the happiest trimester for, for, the, for the mother. Um, you've gotten over the morning sickness and you're not in the misery of the last trimester where there's no room for anything, right? This last trimester, wood is about cycles, okay? So part of the meaning of wood in terms of it, the sprout coming up from the frozen earth is, is the spring in terms of the Chinese calendar, right? So this is about timing, and this is kind of re-editing the script to make sure that the lessons of life are coming at the right order. So all this is said to happen prenatally here. Okay, any? Any questions on that? Any, please. How's uh, abortion seen from that perspective? How is abortion seen uh, <laughs> socially from this? The first yeah, from the fr from the first trimester, this is considered to be acceptable. acceptable. Yeah, yeah, that that's not after that, not so, no. Right. Uh, use yeah. Um, the same way it does from in Western society, you know, you can you can clearly you know can damage the body, uh, but that would be seen as you you you've kind of interviewed the parents and you know if if being perhaps a crack baby or uh, a baby born with age or something like that that would be considered part of your your curriculum, part of your your karma. I went back here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's obviously a more sterile environment. It's not as natural. Do your children look, are they? They look just like his dad, my daughter looks just like me. Okay, so that kind of agrees with, with what, I've been, what I've been taught. Yeah. 
It doesn't say anything about the people in general, but it says that the manufacturing process is such that it's not so much of a blend. It's more one or the other. Was there someone else? Uh, yes. Um, what about like a stillborn at the end, you know, in the third trimester? Mm -hmm. Is that sort of like a conversation that went on a little too long between the child and the mother and they couldn't work it out? You can always opt out. People opt out of life all, at any stage, right? There's this, we have a shelf life. Um, I might think of something, something to the effect of that, let me give you an example. Let, let's say this lifetime was about being a Sikh master, right? And then one of your, your parents changed their religion, or you know that's going to happen, and you say, I don't want to be in this body for another 60 or 80 years. I have a specific lesson I want. The, the, the contract got changed. I'm opting out. That might be an example of that. Some, no? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're born. Uh, all right. So now we have these, these three treasures. We have the treasure of Jing. of Qi and Shen. And we can create these spaces that we might call the Dan Tian. Okay. Um, Tian refers to a rice paddy and Don refers to something that is concentrated, something that uh, is perhaps medicinal. Actually, the word Don comes from a, the picture of a well that's sort of drying up, evaporating, but the, there's something being condensed inside that well. Right? So Don Tian has been translated as a lot of things, the elixir field, the cinnabar field. Um, but the the closest translation is sort of the concentrated field here. And there is a specific point that is associated with each of these dantians. And so there's a uh, um, uh, acupuncture points that we associate with in, in the middle of these. But th the concept of Jing as essence, it is the densest of this. So basically Jing was matter on the verge of becoming energy or Qi. And Qi is energy on the verge of becoming spiritual nature, or Shen. And Shen is spirit on the verge of becoming nothingness. Right? And it turns out that the alchemy of our lives is turning Jing into Qi, into Shen, into nothingness. Right? So this would be similar to, you could view this very similar to the chakra system. Right? of going from, to, from the root chakra to the crown chakra. Right? This is essentially the Taoist or the, the uh, Chinese version of the chakra system. Right? Now we know that both of these cultures are older than we can record or older than we, than we know. Um, you know you, go, you go far enough back in history and the Chinese say they know their history uh, a lot longer than <coughs> most Western people believe. Uh, and I can tell you that the Vedas were from ancient times. They were ancient in ancient times. So nobody knows the origin of them or about when they were. But in any event, these, what we might call Taoist yoga, is a blending of the meridian system with the chakra system, those two knowledges, those two, two types of knowledge. So I want to say that when we start our existence, um, we talk about cycles of Jing. And it's just a way of saying that at different times in our lives, uh, we, can, we can denote different durations in our life and say that certain things happen. And they talk about y seven and eight year cycles. Um, females work in seven year cycles, males work in eight year cycles. Right? So as a, a point for this, if we look at the menstrual cycle of girls, usually 7 times 2, 14 is when it used to happen. Right? 
But we can say that the, the first cycle of Jing has been compressed or accelerated now. So girls are having their periods much quicker. You know? And I, I've seen kids at three years old on computers. Right? I don't think, I think I could write my name when I went to kindergarten. You know, I mean, so that was another world, right? And seven times seven is usually around menopause for women, right? And we look at men eight times two, 16, and boys, if they're not sexually active, they're thinking about it. <laughs> and if we go back to an agricultural society, the, these people could be married at 16 and 14, right? In the past, that was not, I mean, now it's obviously uh, a little too early, but um, in the past, that wasn't unusual for people to be married at that time. And males, it's eight times eight for their andropause, if you will, right? So because men are young and they, their expression is much more about accomplishing something in the world, right? Women are more yin. And yin is more about feelings, blood, emotions. Uh, so at seven times seven, a woman basically says, this is the time for me now. Um, if I don't have the reproductive option anymore, right? My life is not about the ability to reproduce anymore. I'm conserving my jing because having a menstrual cycle every month, I lose qi and blood. And by age 49, or by in my seventh cycle of Jing, if I wanted a kid, I should have done it before then. Right? I had time. I had you know, uh, 35 years or so. I mean, I had time to, to do this. And biologically speaking, it's not, you really shouldn't be doing it at the end of, end of that cycle. Right? So a woman's body is saying, this Jing is too precious for the reproductive option now. And I want to conserve that for the rest of my life. Right? So a woman is basically saying, I'm more about Shen now than I am about Jing. Right? Does that make sense to you? That when you're young, your first cycle of seven or eight, your second cycle of seven or eight, you're very conscious of your body because you haven't had too many bodies yet. Right? When you've been around for a number of cycles of Jing, you've had a lot of bodies. Your body has changed a lot. And you don't identify with your body so much as you identify more with your experiences. Right? So if I look at this idea of the decline of Jing, my physical body, if that's where my consciousness is, if that's where my value system is, then I will definitely reach a peak and this, the second half of my life is essentially downhill. Right? And what do I have to look forward to? Uh, less elastic skin. Uh, uh, <laughs> diminishing sensual, uh, sensory acuity, right? Poor eyes, poor hearing, the loss of lots of things, right? And generally poor health, right? My health will decline, okay? I'm not saying illness necessarily, but, but my level of vitality will generally go down. My ability to recover from things goes down with age, right? So, if that's what you believe in, then the second half of your life is a fairly depressing situation, right? If, however, I can do the alchemy of changing my consciousness from being Jing-oriented to Qi-oriented, then this is about my relationships and my experiences in life, right? And I would hope that if I, as I got to these critical periods here, interesting that this is very close to the 65 level of retirement you know, for men, um, that if, and particularly because men are so much about what my job is about and what kind of power do I have in, or influence do I have in my job, when I retire, and if that's my mentality, what do I have left? You know, I can't, I can't order people around. I can't, I, did I erect a monument to myself, you know, my, <laughs> my company, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. yeah, men are about, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> 